Welcome, I am Vivek and in this video, let's discuss about my GATE 2020 attempt. Uh, we'll be going through what were my exam strategies, how I managed different sections, in what order I attempted those, my reasons for doing that, how I managed time and at the end of this video, uh, we'll also see what I did after attempting all the sections so as to maximize my mark, right? So let's get straight into this. GATE 2020 paper, this had two sections, the first one on aptitude and verbal and uh, the second one on core computer science. Uh, inside each of those sections, there were one mark questions and two mark questions. Now the section that I attempted first, it is the aptitude and verbal section. My reasons are these. Firstly, this is the easiest section to answer. And secondly, my chances of committing careless mistakes are the highest when the questions are easier. So I want to do this right at the beginning of the exam when I'm totally full of energy because I want to concentrate and not commit any careless mistakes. See, uh, if I'm writing a difficult question, let's say a tough computer science question, I'll be totally concentrated in solving this question. So I'll be very well concentrated in that by default and the chances of my making any careless mistake will be really less. But when the question is easy, I may get a bit hand wavy and I might commit those mistakes. And at the end of this uh, section, I had scored full 15 marks in this and I had taken only 15 minutes. See, in an examination, for every question, you have to see it from two perspectives. One is the time that it consumes and the second is the marks that you get for it. So for that, uh, you also have to consider the difficulty level of the question. Coming to aptitude, questions are not difficult and the time consumed is really less. So in, from both perspectives, it's a win-win for you. You've got to score full here. So see, for every single mark that you lose in aptitude section, you will have to compensate by scoring uh, it in tough computer science section. All marks are of equal weightage. Now the choice is yours, whether you want to score these easy marks or you want to score those tough marks. So now. How do you make sure that you get good marks here? One thing that you have to do from your side is that make sure that you allot enough time for aptitude and verbal. Consider this as a subject. Allot the same time that you would allot for let's say uh, OS or let's say networks or DBMS. Allot the same time for aptitude, allot the same time for verbal and you'll score good. Uh, now uh, I'd scored 15 marks in the first 15 minutes and then I had gone for the one mark questions. Now why one mark questions? My reason was this. There are one mark and two mark questions here and normally let's say you are attempting a board exam, 12 standard board, board exam. What is normally the difference between a one mark and a two mark question or let's say a four mark question? It's mainly in the time consumed, right? In GATE what I have observed is two mark questions are considerably more difficult than the one mark questions. So when you're writing one mark question, it's easier for you to get continuous correct answers and keep up with the flow. And when you are in the flow, it's easier for you to get more correct answers. See, just compare it with let's say a cricket match. Let's say Virat Kohli is batting. You know this, that when Virat Kohli is in form, it's so easy for him to score more runs because it seems like everything that he hits would hit right at the center of his bat and every shot that he plays will go to the boundary. That is what happens when you are in form and the same Virat Kohli, when he is out of form, what happens? Every ball seems very difficult for him and it, it would suddenly feel like it's not the same Virat Kohli that you had seen uh, in the other matches. The same thing happens here. When you're getting continuous right answers, it's more easier for you to get more right answers. When you get stuck somewhere, you start thinking about the question and you waste some time, it's a bit difficult to get back to the flow and continue what you were doing. So this is why I had chosen to go for the one mark questions first and then the two mark questions. And in this section, I had scored a total of 22 correct answers out of 25. So uh, you can see this had taken 45 minutes. So total of 45 plus 15, that is one hour. And by this time, what do I have in my bag? I have 
37 marks out of 40. That is full marks from aptitude section and 22 from one mark section. Now comes the two mark questions. And this is where I really got tested. See, uh, two mark question is what decides your rank. Because one, this is the toughest quiz, uh, section to answer. And this is where you face the real competition. Secondly, this section has 60% out of the total 100 marks. So this is really the decider in the gate examination. And here, frankly speaking, every single question, I had to earn those two marks because I had to put the efforts and answer those questions in order to get those two marks. Uh, at the end of the section, uh, let's say uh, the section took one and a half hours for me. So uh, 90 minutes plus 45 plus 50, a total of two hours and 30 minutes. Uh, and when I completed two mark questions, uh, I spent a total of two hours and 30 minutes and now I have 30 minutes remaining. What did I do? Uh, for the next 15 minutes, I tried answering those questions which I had missed out on. See, there are two questions which I had kept for the end. One is those questions which I was not able to answer and secondly, those questions which I felt are time consuming. For example, matrix chain multiplication. These questions might be easy, but it would take your time. What happens is, if I answer these questions right at the beginning, it may consume a considerable amount of my time and this will create panic inside me. And what will happen? I'll miss out on some other questions as well. So these were the questions that I kept for end. See, whenever you are writing an examination, there is one uh, uh, special thing that you have to develop. That is, whenever you see a question, inside the first 15 seconds, you should be able to determine whether you have to answer it right now or keep it for later. It could be because the question is tough for you. It could be because this is from an area which you have not prepared. It could also be because it is time consuming. So in the next 15 minutes, I tried answering those questions uh, which I kept for later. Now, two hours, 45 minutes were gone. I had attempted all the questions once and I had also gone for the second time. Now, 15 minutes remain. What did I do? Uh, this is something that I had planned before I entered the exam hall that the reason for my writing gate was purely IASC. So I wanted to get into IASC and for that I had set myself a target of 80 marks. Now uh, is it logical to set some marks as target in gate? Uh, theoretically no, but practically I needed some benchmark upon which I can decide whether I should go for a gambling for the remaining questions or should I stay, stay satisfied with what I have. This is why I had gone for 80 marks because if I don't go for certain marks, I will have to sit and evaluate the difficulty level of question paper and then, then set some target uh, inside the exam hall. This will consume a lot of my time and this will be counterproductive. So I went for 80 marks and why 80? Because if I score 75, I know that yes, I'll be in the top 100. But from my test series experience, I know something more. That is, normally when, whenever I feel like, okay, I've scored 75 or I scored 80, I could have committed some careless mistakes here or there. And this would normally uh, make me lose, uh, let's say minus two, three or four marks. So what happens is if I had made such mistakes in one or two questions, I would end up in uh, much lesser marks. So because of this, I had kept that three to five marks margin for careless mistakes. So 75 plus uh, five, you can consider it is 80. So this is how I had ended up with 80 as my target. So when I calculated my marks, it was, uh, if my memory is right, it was 78. So I had actually crossed 75 marks, but I've not crossed my target of 80. So what should I do? Uh, I went for the gamble and this is the reason. If I don't go for the gamble and if in case I end up with let's say minus three or four marks at the end of the day, I will really regret not gambling for the rest of my life because this is something that I planned for and if I don't do that and I end up losing or getting less than 75 marks, I may regret this later. 
So I went for the gamble. And what did I do? I picked all those questions in which I can eliminate at least one out of the four options. If I can eliminate one option, I'll go for a gamble and mark one among the remaining. Why? Because there are four options. If I eliminate at least one, my probability of scoring four uh, positive marks out of this question is more than that of getting negative. So this is why I had gone, gone for the gamble. And surely, because I have, if I had met the target, I would not go, have gone for the gamble. And what happened finally at the end of the examination? When I came back home and then uh, went through the whole paper, I had made two mistakes. The first one on a question on decoder and uh, it was on number of lines or decoder of something. And uh, I remember that my answer was 37 and the actual answer was 1034. So you know what it is. 37 is 2 power 5 plus 5 and 1034 is 2 power 10 plus 10. So you can guess what mistake I had made there. And one more question was there. I don't remember exactly what it was, but uh, it was a two mark question. So a total of minus one plus minus 2.67, that would mean 78 minus 3.67, which would mean I would have ended up at 74.33. But because I had done the gamble, I got an advantage of plus 0.67 and my total gate score was 75 out of 100. So at the end of the day, when I look back into it, yes, the gamble was the right option for me. So uh, I won't really recommend you to gamble, but it depends on your situation. If you have certain target uh, and you've not achieved it, you should expect it to be your good day if you have to make the cut, right? So uh, at the end of the day, yes, I got a good rank. I've made it to the IAC. So it's a happy ending for me. Uh, so this is my gate story. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.